Welcome back to the Dry Fire Journal. This is day 47, and I'm going to show you that I have nothing in my magazine well, and that I also have nothing in my chamber in my 365XL. And today we're going to talk about the importance of having some, having spent some time on step two of the draw. If you've been through our concealed carry class, we teach a generalized method of draw. Now, to be fair, this is the 10 and 2 version of driving compared to how we draw. Your draw will evolve over time, and it should. But we teach step one. I have to defeat my cover garment, and my hand gets on the gun. Step two, my gun comes out and level and ready to use. Notice the index. Step three, the hands meet. Step four, the front sight drives straight to my target or I can escalate up, whatever works for you. But those are the general four tenets of our four-step four step draw. Step two is really important because if I need to use the firearm close to me for some reason, and as always, it depends, right? But if I need to use the firearm close to me, and let's say my attacker is literally right here, and, and that attacker is producing lethal force, and it's imminent, and there's opportunity and jeopardy and all of that happening right now, and I have no preclusion at all, I may need to simply draw to here. Do you practice this? I mean, seriously, do you practice this? Do you practice this dry? Do you practice this live? I think it's probably under practiced. So what we wanna do is think through a few things. First, a method that I have seen, I think it's been popularized by Craig Douglas the most. I don't know if it originated with him, but a method I've seen is drawing to here and having my support hand almost covering all of the cranial area so that I can bam, bam, and work my way, bam, bam. Another method that I have seen uh, that I have found to be particularly useful for It Depends is making sure that my support hand is clearing my cover garment high. Because if my support hand is high, there's nothing getting in the way, whether I'm appendix or strong side, there's nothing getting in the way of me being able to make a clean shot from this position. You'll notice that I have kind of a pectoral index with my thumb. And so somewhere up in this region, my thumb is coming back, but you'll notice I'm not out. I recommend you try this in dry fire because if my elbow goes out, watch where my muzzle is going to go. Really, really important. This is one of the reasons why it's so critical for us, if we're strong side, to bring our elbow straight back as we draw because we might need to do this, we might need to do this. We don't want to do this. The third method that I've seen, and I've seen this in a bunch of different places, the third method that I've seen is particularly for appendix carry, and that is coming straight up from here and almost rocking, keeping my elbow pin and it's rocking to here. The slide needs to not be able to hit me, so I've got quite a bit of distance. Um, but from here, I can do a lot of things, and from appendix, it's a simple wrist motion. Um, there are benefits... And there are drawbacks to all three. I'm wondering if you know of other methods that you want to impart to the rest of the family. But the big question I want to know is, do you practice this? Let's talk about it in the comments, and I'll see you tomorrow.